Um, welcome to the uh, second video in this series, uh, which is updating a series of videos that I did for Fantasy Grounds Classic on effects for the 5th edition rule set. And we're updating these for uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity. And in the last video, uh, we introduced effects uh, and we used the attack uh, modifier uh, for our examples. And in this one, we're going to uh, look at the uh, damage modifier in some detail. We have a look at the wiki here. Uh, we can see that the uh, modifier is DMG, that's our keyword. Um, we can have uh, a dice or a number as a value. Uh, we can have range or damage type or critical as our descriptors. And we've got some uh, notes here. So good place to come if you're looking to create your own effects and get the uh, lowdown on uh, what the effects does and what parameters uh, you can use. Uh, so let's get uh, Bob back. Um, we've already set up uh, our power group here that we did in the last video. We're going to right click, we're going to add action, we're going to add effect, and we're going to open up the dialog by clicking on the magnifying glass here. And we saw from the wiki that the modifier is DMG. We need a colon, um, and we just uh, let's put in a one. And we need to change the targeting to self because this effect has to sit on Bob in order for him to gain the benefit of it. And Bob also needs to be on the combat tracker as does his target and he's already here. So if Bob just uh, does some damage here with his flail to the giant spider, um, we just roll the d8, everything is uh, as you would expect. When we add in the effect here, it uh, appears on the combat tracker, and now when Bob uh, makes an attack, he's getting an extra plus one damage. The effect here is being shown, and instead of a plus two bonus, he's getting his plus three, so he's doing a little bit more damage to the spider. We saw from the wiki that, that we can have a dice string here, so if we change the one to a d6 and swap out our effects, now when we make a, a flail attack, we're rolling a d8 uh, and a d6 for the uh, damage. Uh, and we can also use our uh, PC tags here as well. So instead of uh, a number or a dice string, uh, we can open up our square brackets. Uh, let's uh, use level uh, in this case. Close our square brackets. Uh, and when we swap out the effects, and apply it, uh, Fantasy Grounds translates that into uh, 3, transfers the LVL part into 3, and we can see that uh, Bob's a, a level 3 fighter, so that's correct. And again, uh, when he applies damage then to the uh, giant spider, he's getting an extra 3 points of damage uh, from that effect. Uh, we are not limited to just uh, doing uh, damage. We can specify the kind of damage that we get this effect for. So we just leave our level in and we add a comma and then type in a uh, melee, all in lower case. And we're now restricting this damage to melee attacks uh, only. Uh, so if we swap out our effect again, if we deal some range damage to the uh, spider here with our heavy crossbow, um, nothing happens, we don't get any extra, but if we use our uh, flail, which is a melee attack, then we can see that we're getting our extra three points of damage uh, because it's a melee attack. So we can obviously have ranged in here, so we can uh, limit the damage that we are dealing to either ranged or melee attacks. And we can uh, further refine this uh, if we leave all of that in and then just add another comma and then type in critical, then what we are doing here is limiting this damage or this extra damage uh, to uh, melee critical uh, attacks. Um, so in order to simulate that, well, let's swap out the uh, effects first of all. In order to simulate that, I'm going to be holding down the shift key to make these attacks um, and make Fantasy Grounds think that these are uh, critical hits. And if we do a ranged uh, attack, against the giant spider we can see that we've rolled the two dice we've got our critical dice here but we have no effects uh, and again when we uh, then do it with the melee attack 
we again roll two dice we get our critical dice but we also get our extra three points of damage as well because uh, it was a critical hit using a melee weapon <clears throat> so so far we haven't specified any damage type uh, in this effect we've got a uh, untyped damage um, is what it's called and this takes its lead off whatever weapon is being used so if we look down here we use the flail as a bludgeoning weapon so the extra three points of damage has just been added into the bludgeoning damage and uh, up in the crossbow here the extra three points was just added in to the uh, piercing damage but it could be that this extra damage is a specific type so uh, let's uh, take this back let's um, put in 1d6 again and then we're going to put a comma in and then we're going to specify the damage type this time uh, we'll uh, use fire uh, but it could be any of the uh, damage types recognized in the 5e rule set um, and this means that when uh, Bob does uh, this extra damage it's going to be a uh, fire damage so let's uh, swap out the effects again and let's just make another attack with our flail against the giant spider we saw that the extra d6 was rolled uh, the chat window tells us it's been split up between uh, bludgeoning damage six points of bludgeoning damage uh, and two points of uh, fire damage and altogether uh, 10 points of damage is dealt and all of it was dealt to the uh, giant spider so against this target it didn't really matter because the giant spider uh, hasn't got any resistances but if we look up at the wizard here we see that the wizard actually has resistance to fire so if we were to make the same attack uh, a flail attack here against the wizard um, the extra fire damage is dealt but in this case the wizard has partially resisted the fire damage uh, a total of uh, eight points of damage sorry a total of seven points of damage uh, it was dealt here uh, but only six points got through because the wizard uh, resisted the fire so specifying the damage uh, which is being dealt is important uh, where there are creatures around that might be resistant to the type of damage that is, is being dealt now you might have noticed here that the wizard is also resistant to slashing and piercing damage but not bludgeoning damage um, and uh, as well as fire damage so if we had to or if we were attacking this wizard with uh, let's say our uh, crossbow um, we apply the damage we roll the d6 but this time much more of the damage has been resisted because not only is the fire damage uh, being resisted but also uh, the piercing damage is as well so fantasy grounds calculates all of that kind of thing for you uh, dependent on what the resistances are and the kind of damage that you're uh, dealing now another thing that you might have noticed from this wizard is that the resistance to the slashing and piercing damage can be overcome by magic damage if you have a look at the wizard npc here we can see in his damage resistance that he's resistant to fire and also slashing piercing from non-magical attacks so fantasy grounds has parsed all this out into this uh, effect here resist fire and then resist slashing piercing but not uh, magic so <clears throat> supposing uh, Bob somehow uh, got some kind of spell cast upon him which turned his uh, weapons uh, magical uh, then we can use uh, the uh, keyword or the modifier damage type and this basically will change uh, the damage that uh, Bob is doing to whatever we specify uh, uh, in this with this modifier now we can have an ordinary damage type we could have uh, acid we could have fire slashing any of the damage types in 5e but in this particular instance we want this to be magic damage which is also a damage type recognized by the rule set and so if we just type in damage type magic then and uh, again make sure the targeting is to self uh, when we apply this effect this is going to change the damage type uh, or at least it's not going to change the damage type but it's going to add in the magic damage type to any damage uh, that Bob does so if we do some bludgeoning damage here to uh, our wizard we can see down here it's telling us that we've done bludgeoning and magic damage and all of the damage uh, got through this is because the wizard has no resistances to uh, this type of damage 
but if we do some piercing damage now and we will see that this time the wizard hasn't resisted any of the piercing damage although they're resistant to piercing damage they're not resistant to magical piercing damage and so this uh, the condition here or the damage type has changed uh, or added the magic keyword to uh, the type of damage that Bob is doing so all of the damage is getting through because magic is overcoming uh, the wizard's resistance to piercing. Uh, now there's one more uh, uh, modifier that I'd like to cover in this video and that's the uh, ongoing uh, damage type. Um, and uh, we uh, can assume that let's say Bob's got some kind of uh, magical weapon uh, that does uh, ongoing damage and does damage uh, at the beginning of the creature's uh, uh, turn. Um, so we can uh, uh, we can get rid of this one and we can add a new one uh, add effect and on we go and this one is just simply DMGO and then we end it with our colon as usual and then it will take uh, either uh, it, it will take a dice string it won't take a number uh, it'll take a dice string here um, so let's give it a 1d6 and then we need to specify a damage type and so uh, let's give it a damage type of fire. Now this time we want to make sure that our targeting is set to targets because Bob isn't going to want to have this damage on himself he's going to want to have this damage uh, on uh, his target. So uh, we're going to uh, close that uh, let's uh, make it a uh, Bob's turn. Uh, let's get rid of this effect on Bob. We don't need it. And let's supposing that Bob has uh, targeted the giant spider and then he's uh, applied this effect to the giant spider. And you can see that the uh, spider now has the effect uh, on it. And when we move through the turns, we see that when it gets to the spider's turn, it, it automatically uh, takes uh, some uh, damage from the effect and if we keep uh, going on every time the spider gets his turn um, it will take automatically take an amount of damage as specified by the uh, modifier there. Uh, so that's uh, ongoing damage. Um, there's nothing special about that except that it uh, needs to have a, a parameter of a damage type um, and it, uh, it, it should be a dice string. It won't take a number, it won't take a PC tag, for example, uh, either. Uh, so I think that's probably uh, enough for uh, damage, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.